What's up everyone? The second and final season of Netflix's Punisher debuted last week and fan favorite Punisher villain is the main antagonist for this season, and that would be Jigsaw. And as you guys know, every time a new comic book hero or villain gets some spotlight on TV or in the movies, I'm here to break down their comic book history. So let's do just that with Jigsaw. Jigsaw first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man issue 162 in November of 1976. He was created by Len Wein and Ross Andrew. Like a lot of comic book characters, even though he first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man issue 162 being somewhat of a generic villain, his backstory and origin would later be fleshed out outside of this issue, cementing him as one of Punisher's greatest villains. And with that said, let's see why. The man who would be known as Jigsaw is Billy Russo. He was born into a poor Italian family, but was orphaned by the age of 10 when his abusive father abandoned him. This all set Billy down the wrong path, and eventually he became a hitman for New York's Italian criminal underworld. It was here he was given the nickname Billy the Butte Russo because of his good looks and because every Italian mobster has to have a nickname. He soon would get married to a woman named Susan and abuse her and their son, because the apple usually doesn't fall far from the tree. Anyway, let's see how he became ever tied to the Punisher. After an execution-style killing that inadvertently caused the deaths of Frank Castle's wife and children by being caught in the crossfire, Billy Russo was hired by the Costa family to assassinate Maurice Howells, a hitman who was previously hired to kill Frank Castle as the Costas didn't want any connection to the Castle family left alive. Russo was also hired to do what Howells could not, and that is kill Frank Castle. Russo wired Frank's house with explosives, but somehow Frank managed to survive. So after getting some case files from a sympathetic detective, Frank gears up and straps guns on him wherever he can and puts on a bulletproof vest that he painted a white skull on, becoming the Punisher for the first time. He then tracked down Russo to a nightclub. Needless to say, at the nightclub, Frank kills several criminals before getting his hands on Russo. He cuffs Russo and then puts a gun to his head. Russo says, are you gonna kill me? Frank says, yes. When I do my job, it gets done. No screw-ups, no errors, no mistakes. You are gonna die, but not tonight. You'll die next time I see you. Tonight, you're gonna live so you can tell the Costas face to face they're gonna die. Tell them there's a soldier after them, an instrument of justice, a Punisher. Tell them I won't be long. Punisher then tells Russo to look at his reflection and to remember it, and then he kicks him through the glass face first, which severely disfigures his face. Russo survived the fall, but could no longer be referred to as Billy the Butte, as his face was torn to shreds by the glass and surgeons could only stitch his face back together in a jigsaw puzzle type pattern. This leads him to take the name Jigsaw and get revenge on the Punisher. But now that you know his origins, let's get to his story arcs. The first time we would see Jigsaw was in Amazing Spider-Man 162, as I said earlier. In his debut, we see Jigsaw trying to frame the Punisher for murder. In the story, Jigsaw is able to catch Spider-Man and use him as bait, telling the Punisher to come out from wherever he's hiding, or him and his gang are gonna start killing innocent people. But instead of the Punisher coming to the rescue, Nightcrawler does, saying the time has come for Nightcrawler to join the fray. This allows Spider-Man to break free, at which point the Punisher shows up and him, Spider-Man, and Nightcrawler start owning Jigsaw's gang. Jigsaw tries to run away, hitching a ride on top of a fire truck of all things, but Spider-Man goes after him. The two have a quick little fight, but it ends with Spider-Man subduing Jigsaw by tying him up with a fire hose. Then in 86, we got a five-issue Punisher limited series. In this series, Jigsaw is an inmate at Riker's prison. In the prison, he uses resources to become a partner to Don Trevello, who at the time was a notorious crime boss that had almost the whole prison under his payroll. Being on Trevello's good side, Jigsaw gained protection and other accommodations within the prison. The crazy thing is that the Punisher was caught by the police and sent to Riker's prison as well. It was later revealed that Jigsaw was somehow able to drug the Punisher, causing him to behave erratically and attack any and all criminals, even for minor offenses. And because of Punisher's recent bout of madness, he was caught and sent to the same prison as Jigsaw. So Jigsaw, deciding to make use of his power within the prison was like, you know what? I'm gonna get my revenge on the Punisher by sending a bunch of Cervello's men and instruct a handful of prison guards to stage an attack on the Punisher. But come on, this is the Punisher. Jigsaw couldn't really have thought this was gonna work. And did it? No, of course it didn't. They got their butt handed to them by Castle. After this, Castle goes searching the prison being like, who the hell put out a hit for me? Castle soon finds out it was Jigsaw behind the drugs, the hit, everything, and threatens to kill him, which Jigsaw's like, you're gonna threaten me in my own prison? Get him, boys. And instructs his thugs to hit him and hurt him, but nobody touches face. Jigsaw's men then hold Castle down, at which point Jigsaw intends to get his revenge by carving Frank's face with a broken glass bottle. But Frank breaks free and crushes the bottle within Jigsaw's hand. Yeah, 
That kind of backfired. You think Jigsaw would have learned his lesson by now. Stay far away from any sort of glass. Long story short, Jigsaw and Chevello's bigger plan was to escape the prison by taking the warden hostage. Having the warden hostage, they had the upper hand, so the Punisher handed his gun over to Jigsaw. But instead of just escaping with the warden, Jigsaw had to get his revenge, so he fired the gun at the Punisher. But the gun exploded in his hand because the Punisher loaded it with the wrong bullets on purpose. This cost Jigsaw and Chevello's escape, and both of them were returned to their prison cells, at which point Punisher made his own escape from Riker's prison. Then later in the series, Jigsaw was brainwashed by the Trust to serve as a member of an assassination squad that dressed like the Punisher. But don't worry, he eventually remembers who he is after running into the Punisher once again, at which point he attacks him. But guess what? He's defeated once more. Then skipping some stuff here and there, we have Punisher War Journal issues 18 through 23. In this story, Jigsaw now wearing a color inverted Punisher costume brainwashes a young NYPD police officer and essentially turns the cop into his version of the Punisher to of course cause chaos and kill the Punisher. Jigsaw and the Punisher eventually have an intense battle on the Brooklyn Bridge at the climax of the story where the Punisher once again spares Jigsaw's life. At which point Jigsaw is taken into S.H.I.E.L.D. custody. While in S.H.I.E.L.D. custody, Lynn Michaels, who once upon a time was Lady Punisher, but now works for S.H.I.E.L.D., gave the cop Jigsaw brainwashed to be Punisher a gun, at which point he shot Jigsaw in the head. But don't worry, this is comics, so no main characters stay dead for long. Meaning, of course, Jigsaw survived and helped fight off scrolls during Secret Invasion. He also helped an attack on the New Avengers. Jigsaw more recently appeared in the Civil War II story as one of the criminals that Kingpin hired to help him rebuild his New York empire. Then during the Search for Tony Stark storyline, Jigsaw is seen rejoining the Hoods gang and attacking Castle Doom, AKA the headquarters of Doctor Doom. But now, it's time for powers and abilities. Jigsaw has no superhuman powers, but as far as human standards go, he is very strong, on a level comparable to the Punisher. Jigsaw also has tons of experience with street fighting techniques. He's an extremely dirty fighter doing whatever he can to win, and is competent with an array of weapons due to his upbringing with mobsters. Even though Jigsaw has no military training, he's a natural strategist and tactician. His erratic behavior makes him a difficult opponent for the Punisher, as you don't really know what he's gonna do next. In short, he will stop at nothing to get revenge on the man who disfigured his quote-unquote beautiful face meaning his sheer will to get revenge on the Punisher by any means necessary is what makes him one of Castle's greatest threats. If you guys want some Jigsaw reading recommendations, which I'm sure you do, read The Amazing Spider-Man issue 162, The Punisher Year One, The Five Issue Punisher Limited Series, Punisher War Journal issues 18 through 23, and Punisher If You Can't Beat Him, Become Him, from Punisher Volume 3, issue 4. First up for Wednesday, January 22nd, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Issue 1. The universe is on fire, hundreds of worlds are at war. Never has there been such hatred and division across the cosmos. If you wanted to start reading the Guardians of the Galaxy from the jump, this is your chance. Now we have Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man Issue 2. Tom Taylor, writer of the Injustice comic, is writing this book. Need I say more? Here we have Batman Issue 63. There are strange going-ons in the dark alleys of Gotham City, and Batman's gonna need help if he's gonna fight it. And finally, we have Shazam Issue 2. Shazam is easily one of my favorite DC characters, and his brand new self-titled series is being written by the great Jeff Johns, which means it's a must read. And that, my friends, is gonna bring another episode of Variant to a close, but remember to follow us on social media like our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the links for that is in the description below, but I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.